My name is Alyssa Cedarleaf Dahl, and I just use my name, my artist name, for my business. I'm also a teacher for the Minneapolis Public Schools. I teach at a school called Justice Page School in, in South Minneapolis. And um, I do both work locally and internationally. I seek out projects, international projects, every couple of years and try to use muralism as a way to make those projects happen. So most of my murals are local to Minneapolis and the Twin Cities area, but I do have work um, in other countries like Thailand and Uganda and Chile and Australia and I'll be heading to, and Spain, and I'll be heading to Puerto Rico in a couple days to do a mural there with a middle school. I was born in South Minneapolis, actually just a couple blocks from George Floyd Square. Lived in South Minneapolis and moved to North Minneapolis as an adult, and I've lived here for 20 years. So I spent all my life here, but I've been able to travel and live other places too. And um, I love the city, and I also see all kinds of ways we could make it better. I'd definitely say I'm a muralist and a teacher. Uh, I also do oil paintings like the one behind me. Commissions, I do like to work big, so most of my commissions are larger oil paintings or murals. But the majority of my work lately has been doing murals with students, collaborative murals with our community, um, or murals myself that I'm doing for our community. So in undergrad, I studied Spanish and art and I was always looking for intersections. I was always looking for opportunities to use Spanish and art as a way to communicate ideas. And when I was first teaching, I was a Spanish translator for the Minneapolis Public Schools and an artist. Um, and I was trying to find ways that art could be a third language with my students who were bilingual Spanish, English. They were brand new to the country. They're, they were learning English but I found that art was another way that we could communicate and we could connect with people um, and we could showcase who these students were. So I started working with a group of newcomer students and actually I was working with them um, during grad school too. We called ourselves Club de Arte. It was an art club. We met after school and it was designed primarily for students who were brand new to Minnesota uh, from other countries. There were a few opportunities for us to make murals as this uh, group started to really develop. And the murals were really neat because they could broadcast messages and imagery to a wide variety of people. So we did one during a um, presidential election and the students in my group were doing um, imagery of themselves and they had speech bubbles that talked about if I could vote, I would vote for blah, blah, blah. At this point I was teaching uh, students, most of them were dreamers. So the opportunity for them to vote at that point and potentially still now is up in the air. So uh, we were able to use murals and large scale art to help share the voices and experiences of these newcomer students in our city and in our schools. So that kind of got me started and I um, saw the value in that and I thought I saw how students just love to take ownership of a wall. To them that felt really, really um, important and they couldn't believe that they were um, allowed to do that. And a lot of the murals were permanent and then some of them were temporary and it really didn't matter. It was an opportunity for them to create something beautiful together and share it. And these are students that tend to be traditionally pretty like in the shadows type students. Students that don't want to um, create any problems in a classroom, students that uh, aren't really understanding all the content in English. And this group and the art that we did actually brought them to the forefront. So that's, I would say, one of the things that really got me started in muralism. I usually go to the community where the mural will exist and talk to people there about that community. And we brainstorm characteristics of that community, brainstorm highlights of it, problems within that community, and then usually that brainstorming session brings up imagery that then can exist in the mural. Uh, that's an example for muralism where I try to really generate imagery and ideas from the community where the mural will live. And that's something I do with my students too. That's part of our year-long process of creating murals in my classroom 
is identifying a theme, identifying stakeholders, interviewing people, and then starting to design and create imagery that go with that theme or not necessarily, and then bringing those images together to create a composition that we then present to stakeholders for approval and then color and then create. A majority of it comes in the actual creation of the mural. The end product, yes, but the actual creation of the mural, students and participants learning how to collaborate, learning how to create something side by side, learning how to choose ideas, um, share their talents. So not every student that I have when we do collaborative murals or participant is an uh, amazing detail painter, right? So what are the different ways that people can contribute? Well, they can do some design transfer, they can do some um, promotional work, they can um, interview people, they can um, help clean, they can do some of the primer painting, they can do some of the installation. So there's so many different ways that people can contribute to these projects that um, a lot of it is skill building, a lot of it is communicating, and for students that I teach that are primarily ages 12 to 14, those kinds of skills are real world skills that they need. Uh, if a little kid paints one tomato on a mural, you'll hear that little kid say that they made that mural. There's a sense of ownership in whatever contribution particip participants make to these murals. And the idea that we can have something on the wall that represents 250 people's creativity and contribution is um, really what muralism, muralism brings to a community.